and uh, what style I like to teach. I know lots of different coaches teach so many different styles and every player has their individual kind of unique touch to the style. So like we're just going off of the basics, but um, to just kind of bring some more power into the swing, to watch the ball into the swing, to have more balance during the swing. That's what I'm basing mine off of just, of just my own personal use and learning from multiple other very high level coaches. So um, I'm just gonna show you what I'm working with and hopefully you guys can try to attach it or tweak your swing a little bit. Uh, so where, where we suggest our feet be in like a comfortable stance, but like the younger kids, the easiest way to explain that is just get their feet together and get them to kind of bounce out where we're naturally they land in normally a comfortable stance. We don't want to be straight legged. We want them to have that little bit of a bend, a little bit of a bounce. I don't want them bouncing when they're swinging, but that little bit of a bend and a bounce in it. Um, I personally like the toes going a little bit inward. If we have our feet like this, we're locked out. Like we can't finish our hips to that rotation and all of our power comes from this back leg and pushes into that hip. And so if our toes are in here, I can rotate fully through. Ideally, I want my belly button facing the picture. So um, I like my toes in just a bit so that when I finish that swing, I can load all the way through with my leg, my belly, my hips, and my upper body. Most of the time from lower body though, all that power. Where I tell the girls to line up really kind of depends on what kind of pitch you're throwing. Like slower pitchers are more like near the front of the box. So you think the pitch is around the middle of the middle of the box for like pitchers. Faster pitchers, I go to the back of the box. I normally for these two little um, I don't know if you call them corners on the plate or whatnot, but I do like if I'm at the back of the box, I kind of have my foot right there, right in the corner of that back one. At the front, I normally have my foot right here. And, and this goes ahead as long as it's not outside the box. Otherwise, I have a short stance, so I can do that. Otherwise, I back up. So, uh, just starting with that. So, right now, I'm going to go with the mediocre pitcher. So, I'm going to be, you know, in a position where the good part of my back covers that plate. That's how I check it. You know, um, they used to teach that can your back tap the corner of the plate? You can do that too. But the reality of it is, is we get leaning to reach that. So, you're really going to check it from your standing position. Drive the elbow at the ball, push the bat over the plate, and see where it lands. And right here, that's exactly where I want to hit. Right there. And I can still drive to the outside corner and inside corner feet it. So breaking it down a little bit more, we're gonna have our feet in just a bit. Hands are gonna be up by the bottom part of this ear. Now commonly when you see a hitter go like this, we like normally like result dipping up underneath the ball meaning the ball is going high a lot or just coming off the top part of that bat. Uh, that bat. So what, we're, what the girls are doing is they're starting from above the ear and then when the swing comes, they're dropping their hands and swinging to here. So to fix that without trying to mess too much with your body, and for you girls, if you notice it's going up in the air all the time and not a good kind of going up in the air, then take your hands, lower them a bit. Put them near that ear. So all we really have to do is push that elbow through the zone, punch the bat, and finish. So uh, if you're struggling with that, then you're gonna wanna lower your hands right near that kind of mid lower part of that ear. Now, I use the elbow as an example because we all, we've all used an elbow before. You probably have a sibling that you went like this to, or you know, trying to get someone's attention. And so I use that example because um, that's the easiest one. You wanna drive that at the ball, not the pitcher, but the ball. So if the ball is here, we're gonna drive that inside. If it's here, we're gonna drive that out. Side, and our back will fall where that elbow leads. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we're driving this elbow. So it's feet, and by bottom part of the ear, elbows driving towards the pitcher. Now when I'm driving, some girls will push with this back foot, or they'll pivot, or they'll pivot and push. I know some girls like to take the step. So it's really just dependent on what you're doing. Like The only difficulty with this step is you have to be able to step without your hands going too far underneath the ball. So like right here, that's about what I step. My hands aren't lower right here. Watch my hands there for a second. Okay, but if I step from here, now watch my hands during this. If I'm going from here to here, what's happening? I'm dropping a whole bowling thunder. 
And so my bat is gonna be underneath that ball instead of right through that ball. So just being aware of that too, like having that kind of in your mindset as you're practicing and training as well too. Not stepping too far, you can put a piece of tape there and mark where you should be stepping to where your bat will drop and just check after every swing and see if you cross it or not. All right, so getting back to that swing. We have our feet, hand, elbow. The next thing is our chin. This chin has to be right to the shoulder. I'm not saying like this, but like this. I want to see with two eyes. So if I have this chin to the shoulder, I can see both eyes right at the picture. As soon as I put my chin over here, and a good test to kind of work with the girls is, is when they're set up, if you feel like they're not looking at the ball as much as they should, they should and they're kind of seeing out that peripheral vision, take their chin or tell them to take their chin, put it more towards the shoulder. And what you'll do is if they're like this, tell them to put a, a hand over their eye, and then stand right here and hold up a number. They can't read the number, it means that their head's not turned enough towards the picture. But if I bring my chin to the shoulder, I can read the number. So, feet, hand, elbow, chin, and then drive. So we're gonna do 10 dry swings like that. Feet, hand, elbow, chin, one more, I'll just give you an example, but you're going to do 10 feet, hands, elbow, chin. So I again do this in, with a bat in your living room as long as there's nothing broken or, or anything that's breakable around you to get broken, I should say. Um, so what, how this drill works, this dry drill is, we're going to actually finish the swing with this back leg and this back hand. So I still want you going slow motion because I think it's all about getting into the proper mechanics. And we need to get the proper mechanics so when we do swing fast at that play, we just kind of react off of muscle memory. We have the appropriate stuff programmed in our muscle memory so we can actually hit the ball of success and more power and more drive. So our feet are gonna be in, hands, elbow, chin, and we are going to dry swing. And you're gonna hold here for one, two, and then drop your knee. If you cannot do a perfect squat, if you've over-rotated, the knee's gonna look like this. And if you've under-rotated, the knee's gonna look like this. It's really hard to squat like that. So if I over-rotate, I'm not gonna be able to squat properly. If I under-rotate, I'm not gonna be able to squat properly. Once you've gone through your reps, get ready to do the next drill. Relief. Okay, we're gonna do this with no bat, and then we'll show you what this looks like with the bat. What we're doing is, move that so I don't trip on it. What we're doing is we're working on not over rotating this foot too highly. Getting that foot pushed forward during that swing, not keeping it back on the ground and kicking low. So, putting a cone there. I'll move my swing back just a bit. Putting my cone there. If I properly do this, I should be able to get this knee and a swap towards there without knocking over that cone. Ten slow motion swings from both sides. So going from the left side as well too. The next row that we're going to be doing is actually just working on not kicking that heel too far off, not going too far this way, and finishing that back leg as well too but just being aware of what you're doing with your feet. So we're gonna set this cone up right near that back foot. When we swing, you want this foot to end in a position like this. I don't wanna to be too far down, okay? So getting on that ball of that foot, getting all that drive in there. If I do that, I will not hit the cone. Again. You can use a water bottle as well too. It doesn't make a difference. What I don't want to see is this. 
Okay, pushing that cone away because I'm over-rotating that. 